Hello everybody, I am the Black Sigma, or you could just call me Eric, and welcome back to Mario Galaxy, where we are taking on Bowser's Star Reactor. The first star being the Fiery Stronghold. Oh yeah, there is a full level. I'm glad I didn't try and push this into the last episode. Dumb. Uh... The old Mario 64 Bowser level music. No, you don't. You're not gonna trick me into setting fire to myself. But I am going to climb on top of this swamp. Ah, No secrets up here. Sad. Ooh, green platform did weird spinny thing. Now, gravity trick area. Be careful not to fall into any black holes. Hmm. I don't want to see if there's uh, anything above that swamp, though. I was afraid he'd push me into a uh, reverse gravity and another black hole. That would be uh, a little upsetting if it occurred, funnily enough. Actually. Don't even have to deal with the fire traps down there. And I'm certainly not getting that row of coins further down. That'd be pointless. What? It's the big man himself, Jack Black. Oh no! He's breaking my platforms. I should be careful and hurry the heck up. Oh no, he's destroying everything, but I still reached him. Hello, Bowser. Whoa, ha, ha, ha. you finally made it. Just in time for me to stomp you into space bits. Oh no, where are we going? Onto this weird planet with a molten lava core that splits into four portions. That's kind of crazy, bro. Haha. <laughs> Tricked you into going into your own lava. And then you get spun like your, uh, dino piranha. Ah, oh, you're upset that you took a hit from little old me, Mario. Oh no. Electric shock waves. Yeah, you're a fool, Bowser. Yeah, and that was what was meant to happen the first time, but he didn't really move across the planet. Oh no, now he's really mad. Ow. You know what, that's on me. Being a little, uh, full of my own hubris again. But, well, he's trying to run in uh, more evasive patterns, but it's not working out for him. And now, he is downed. Back off of that little planet to your solid fortress. What the hell? Foolish Mario, my plan is too far along now. You really think you can stop me? I mean, I know I said somebody, uh, who's gonna stop me in, in the trailer for the movie, but 
the answer should not be you. I don't want you to do that. Blah ha ha. Yeah, I'm gonna stop him. Hey, look at that. It's a good old grand star. Grand Why did I make that joke? Well, at least we've saved another grand star. And we can return to the observatory. And we'll be able to go to a brand new dome. Hmm. As the power of the Grand Star returns to the beacon, shines a nice green. And power is turned on in the libra library portion of the level, with a little kitchen over there, is what I think that dome is. Pretty sure it's the kitchen. Yeah, it's the kitchen. You rescued another Grand Star, and power has returned to another dome in the back of the observatory. Hmm, but I still don't think we have the star power we need to fly the observatory through the universe. The villain who kidnapped your special one took her far from here, to the center of the universe. Once our star power is restored, the observatory will be able to go there. Then you can reunite with your special one. Neat. Oh, seems I can't enter the library itself. Shame. I guess I'll go back there when I can, though. Otherwise... Get this one up, and don't mess that up. See, what I'm trying to do was jump out in a way where I don't hit my head, and then do basically that, but a lot smoother. Ah, well. It's time to go into the kitchen, I suppose. We have discovered an enemy base in the region, can only hope they're not misusing the power of that poor Grand Star. Grand Dad. Hmm. This one is accessible before that one. Interesting. But with 16, that's the Beach Ball Galaxy. I just want to double check with you that I'm not a... Uh, Missing anything new in any other places. Okay, we're good. It's just through here. Which means... To... Wait. Oh, for some reason I thought that planet was part of a different galaxy. Nope, we're going to the Beach Ball Galaxy. Let's -a go! Sunken treasure. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Ah, I see. There be star chips beneath these waves. Hmm. I'm gonna need to learn how to swim. Just kidding, I already know how it works. You, you press A repeatedly, and you can spin to do a little dash underwater. Coins act as air, so on and so forth. And another star chip. And one through the clam, and I completely whiffed it. Come on, buddy. There we go. Wow. 
one right over by this penguin. And the last one is somewhere that I've forgotten. Is it dead center of this? No? Hmm. If only I didn't forget where the last one was. Wait. Was it in the box over here, or is this just a one-up? It's not even a one-up. The last one wasn't through here, was it? No, this seems, uh, purely optional to me. Well, this isn't the best way for this to work. But it'll do. Yeah, it leaves all the remaining blocks as star bits, which was not exactly what I thought it did. But still, eh, worth it, I guess. I don't think it's in that chest, which I am pretty sure I need a Cooper shell to open. But I haven't seen a shell in uh, this iteration of the... Oh, it's in the box right next to that guy. I remember now. How did I miss this? There we go. And... Out I go! to a brand new portion of the level that I could not previously access. Hello, bunny. Wow, all that for a one-up. Hey, I tried to spin you first. And a ground pound. And a spin. And dodge that and spin. And a spin the last piranha plant because I can. Then... Oh well, that made a portion of level on a timer appear. If only I didn't have to run all the way to the start of it and could just backflip up it. I... I don't think I need that. I don't think I need these wall jump walls. Oh. Well, I do if this isn't a surface I can wall jump off of. I didn't need it if I could side flip off this and then, uh, wall kick and spin. But apparently, that wall just will not work for some reason. Well, that's kind of disappointing, but I suppose I'll take the star. Oh! Uh, Rosalina's library is now open, as is a hungry Luma standing outside this dome. I'll speak to Rosalina first, by which I mean enter her library, not actually talk to her. Whoa, weren't you just standing outside? How'd you get in here so fast? Hmm. Chapter 1. The Celestial Duo. Our story begins a very, very long time ago, with a young girl. Oh, I did not mean to do that. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. 
I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days, and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, if we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship, and then the two set sail into the starry sky. This is how the search for the Celestial Mother began. Chapter 2 Star Bits Days passed with no sight of the comet, or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl, above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot-flavoured tea. But... Hmm. Apricot flavoured tea. Sounds kinda nice. I forgot to bring water! At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter, and the girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh, and the girl couldn't help but join in. All right, maybe just a nibble. Le leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. Chapter 3 The Comet A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. Sorry, the morning sun? But if your ship is still, there's no sunrise to... And if it's orbiting the sun, you'd have light at all times because you've got four windows on every side of the ship. Unless you're orbiting with the bottom of the ship facing the sun. Eh, whatever. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get to that comet! The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop utterly unable to take another step. Look! Oh. <clears throat> that was meant to be Luma. Look! Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, 
the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm I I'll bet there's water here too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. That should do it for today. I'll come back when I've earned more chapters. In the meantime, I feel like I can push out one more star before I call it an episode. You there, Hungry Luma, would you look want would you like some of my 1985 star bits? You're famished and you need 600. Well, Guess the year's no longer 1985, but a thousand, uh, 1685. No? 1385. That's how math works. There we go. That's it! I am stuffed! Here we go! Transform! Pew! A new ge the, 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 the name of the galaxy was said, but I did not read it. I was just gonna say a new galaxy appeared. It's the Drip Drop Galaxy, with a giant eel outbreak. Oh dear. That's a lot of eels. Hmm. And a wise old penguin is here to teach us the way. Well, wow, really going full circle around the whole planet, eh, Mario? Well, I'm just gonna take this shell, dive into the water, and wow, look at that! Permanent propulsion. Until I use it to open a chest. Now, this one... Uh, let's avoid as many torpedoes as we can. It would, uh, not be ideal to run into a torpedo, funnily enough. Oh, come on! That's mean! Putting an enemy in a chest. Why would you forsake me this way, Nintendo? But the goal of this level is not to break all the chests, it's to defeat all the eels. And I'm not doing that until I open as many chests as I can find. Come on with the enemies in the chests! Stop it, Nintendo. It's really rude of you. And I think... I think that might be the last one. Nope, 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 nope. Whew, that was a little too close for comfort. But yep, I've just gotta, you know, find the eels and throw some shells right in their faces. The red ones home in and make that easier. But, I'm skilled enough to do it without. Probably. Okay. My new target has been sighted. And I've just gotta line up a shot. Okay, I guess that works. Running face first into it myself. While holding the shell. And... Steady, 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 and, oh, nope, and, fire, by which I mean just run face first into it again. That works. 
And conveniently, I was right above the spawn for that star. <laughs> okay then. I guess with that one in the bank, I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.